DreamHack Open is brought to you by Chipotle, Corsair, Monster Energy, Nice Cactus, AT&T, and GG Bet. When we got to Atlanta, we had our top eight teams, but we're just one series away from finding our top four, and that series is going to be VP versus INTZ. This is a matchup that already happened yesterday, so we got plenty to talk about on the desk. My name is Rich. I'm going to be your host, and I am joined by Potter and Imp. Let's talk about what exactly happened yesterday when we saw these teams go head-to-head. -head. I feel like some factors have potentially changed with Potter. If people didn't see the series yesterday, what did they miss? Well, they missed uh, VP almost clawing their way back. It was pretty much INTZ coming out the gate, starting off with a very strong lead, and we thought, where is VP at? They were very absent, but actually, they did end up start racking up some points on the board towards the end there, and they ended up losing that match 16 to 10. But coming into today, it looks like a whole completely different new team. It looks like a much better version of, of VP, and I think INTZ, the taste they left us with yesterday was, was quite lackluster. That first game yesterday was very well played by them, but but followed up was, was that poor performance in, in the second game. So I think INCC right now is a little bit hit or miss, whereas for VP, we've seen them play well today. So uh, I think uh, we're voting in for a great match. It, it also feels like we kind of see two teams on upward, uh, opposite tra trajectories. She yeah, took sure. a lot to get that out, but one team has seemed to be heating up, one seems to be pulling off. Mm. All in all, though, I think we need to take a, a peek at our group here. This is going to close out Group B, and we're going to figure out who makes it to the championship bracket. Crazy from this group is already waiting to see who they will be playing up against tomorrow once the dust settles here. So as you can see, basically everything that was said, illustrated there through the numbers, through the mathematics, Chaos was the first team, though, to fall in this group just a little bit earlier on today. Now, let's actually talk about those trajectories. Now that I can say that word, I've got my footing. Uh, do you think that it is a hit or miss thing, or do you think that we are seeing INTZ maybe completely cool off? Yeah, it's a good question. I think we'll have to wait and, and conclude that after this game. Uh, we haven't really seen them play that much, and, and by the scoreline, 16-12 against Crazy, not necessarily a bad result, but it was the way they played that game. It, it wasn't really impressive at all. I think INTZ right now is still in a, a little bit of a growing pain in terms of they just recently bought in bowls. We heard them say yesterday it wasn't really an active move either. They had to because of Destiny and some visa issues, so it, it was kind of forced upon them as well. So I think right now, INCC, as we also said yesterday, there's a lot of potential in this lineup. There's a lot of skilled players, but can they make it work when they're facing a great unit like Virtus Pro? I have my doubts. Well, just to play Devil's Avocado, as much as they said that they didn't necessarily move into that position uh, by their own volition, they also are playing around the player now. So yeah. it could be something that maybe does end up working in their favor. They were talking about how well it seemed to work earlier. Definitely so. And I mean, we spoke about it a little bit yesterday, but Bolts is a very uh, veteran player. He's got a lot of uh, achievements under his belt, and he knows exactly what he needs to bring to his team to allow them to succeed, right? And I think that's why they've put Bolts in his com comfortable positions. They have Zan now moving around the map. He's going to be going w in with Yell and Cello kind of a three-man unit to try to open up space, allow Bolts to be on the extremities of the map and kind of pick off players. Whoever is uh, getting manipulated in their rotations, that's where Bolts is going to come in. And he's also a, quite a strong anchor as well towards the extremities of the maps. He's just, he's always good for two, Jacob. You said it yesterday. Always good for two. Now we talked about what we might see. Now we need to see where we are going to be seeing it. The veto is going to be coming in right now. Pimp, let me know if anything catches your eye. Yeah, let's see about it. Uh, I think it's relatively safe to say that INCC is going to try to force Virtus Pro into playing some of the more open maps. We see Vertigo going out of the way, we see Nuke going out. Makes sense, not necessarily maps that, uh, for an example, you know, INCC playing Nuke against Vertigo. Uh, sorry, Nuke against Virtus Pro after seeing how they played uh, today is, is not going to be a great idea. Train being picked out by Virtus Pro, I, I think we saw that coming. Dust 2 for INCC, that is the open map that we talked about, right? That's a, a aim heavy map, it's a map where you can play very fast, you can play very slow. Basically, whenever started on the terrorist side, you can control the pace, and I think that's going to be a great thing for INCC. Following up by Mirage, we know that's to be the map they played yesterday, where INCC completely manhandled Virtus Pro. It is Virtus Pro's best map, so 
given the circumstances, I think they can be pretty okay with this Vito. Definitely so. I was hoping that VP would come out and do like a 200 IQ repick Mirage, even though they lost it. But this Vito actually kind of works out in the favor of INTZ because uh, Virtus Pro, they don't play Vertigo and they don't play Dust 2. And we saw in the first rotations of the bands, they had to get rid of that Vertigo. Yeah. INTZ is very competent on that Dust 2. So uh, it should be an easy win on that Dust 2 for VP. Very or fair. for INTZ. Yeah, rather. very fair. I mean, we have right now to chew on all the history, all the information from yesterday. And also now we have the map pick. But we want to look at one more thing. And that's what the players are actually thinking on the side of VP. I think that uh, today we are better team than yesterday because uh, our communication is much better and our, our skill wise is also much better. Everyone is hyped and we are just coming one by one, one round by one round and just try to uh, be better than the enemies. Our expectation is to reach the playoffs and then we will see what, what, what will happen. that are very close, right? They, they just have to make, be able to move through this series if they want to achieve that goal. It doesn't seem like one that is completely out of their hands, but when we do actually look at even getting to this point, how reliant were they on different factors like Snacks going off? Not necessarily true relying on, on Snacks going off. I think he's going to be that X factor within the lineup. We have Mihu and we have Snatchy. I would say those are the two best performing players within this Virtus Pro lineup. Then if you add on Snacks having a great game, that's when Virtus Pro becomes scary. That's when you start to think, all right, this is a team that can potentially go all the way in a tournament like this. But we need to see him deliver at, at you know, on a bigger stage like this. We haven't seen Snacks in that level for Ever since he was basically playing for mouse sports, it seemed like it's been going downwards for him. So I think with him playing well, then we look at a Virtus Pro who can beat anyone. With Snap playing not so well, we look at a Virtus Pro who potentially on a good day can beat a team like INC. Definitely so. And we saw Snacks kind of livening up in the earlier series today on that train. I mean, you mentioned it, Jacob. We haven't seen him loosey-goosey in that server, uh, you know, thriving in the shenanigans that his opponents are throwing his way. But we did see it today, a glimpse of it, at least, Rich, on that train. And, and I'm hoping that he's actually able to translate that into this series as well. But yeah, Mihu and Snatchy, these are definitely the two superstars on this VP lineup, at least in this tournament thus far. Okay, very important to keep in our mind right now. They're going up against an opponent that if they come out hot, we've already seen that they can deliver some pretty powerful stuff. As we move down the line here, you're starting to see some of the faces of the names of the players that have been able to be relatively consistent here at this tournament. And now we start to think about what they'll be able to do if they're going to make it to Sunday. It was very interesting talking to Snacks after the first win today, saying that he was currently the in-game leader and he was trying to do that role uh, and fulfill that role. Normally, if you are, are new to Counter-Strike out there and you're watching, the in-game leader is always going to be sitting in the middle, having the overview. He can look to his right, he can look to his left. He's going to have two players on each side. Now, Snacks is sitting a little bit to the left for whatever reason that is. So, just judging by that, you'd, you'd argue that Michu may be a, a guy that has a lot of input within this lineup. He has a lot of stuff that he wants to do, and, and that's maybe why they rearranged the way they're sitting, but it's quite a, a funny little detail if you're not watching too much counter Strike to see the in-game leader actually not be sitting in the middle. Yeah, very, very important thing to keep our eye on, and now we want to turn our eyes to INTZ and actually look at these players. Talk to me about Yell just a little bit, Potter. Yell, he's the offer and the in-game leader for INTZ, and we're going straight into train on that first map. And yesterday, we saw INTZ on that train, and Yell having some impactful rounds. And we know that train is a wide open map. We know the off can be very impactful coming into that train. So absolutely, INTZ needs Yell to step up. And also, Cello, I mean, we spoke about it yesterday, how strong he is with that rifle. I mean, Jacob, you mentioned that you saw him in the EPL being like the best server, best player in all the servers at that tournament. Mm. We haven't seen the superstardom coming out of Cello in quite some time. We saw glimpses of it yesterday. We saw glimpses of, glimpses of Yell showing up yesterday. We need all of these players to step up all five of them at the same time if they want to uh, go face to face with the with the upward trajectory Virtus Pro. Yeah, and I think that's what's so interesting about this matchup as well. There's so much skill on this server to be completely honest. I think you know, if you compare this matchup to the one we just saw between Sprout and uh, Sprout, I'm sorry, and Illumina, I think there's more skill on the server now than there were before. I think there's many more players right here that can actually step it up to a level where you talk about, you know, Chelo potentially being a guy that that at some point could could play for a team like Furia or even MIBR at a certain time that was uh, to be considered. So 
Skill on the server right now, there's a lot. The question is, can they release that skill and can they make it work together as a unit on the teams? Because one thing is to have skill, but if you don't really feel comfortable within your team environment, you can have just as much skill and, and still not deliver up to uh, to what you're actually supposed to. I, I mean, but everything that you're saying right now is completely individual based, right? You're, you're not yeah. necessarily saying as much as you can have two people that have a lot of potential and are absolutely incredible. Sometimes it's just not going to work it, when you put them together. You can ask my ex-wife. Yeah, and, <laughs> and it, it requires that they facilitate you, right? And, and your yeah. ex-wife probably didn't do that, so that's a problem thanks, you have to thanks figure for understanding. out. Yeah, thanks for understanding. Wonder why. Anyway, <laughs> it, is, it is one of those scenarios, as, as, especially as we're looking towards Bolt here, that if he's being facilitated within this lineup, if he's being catered to, which it sounds like he is after the interview we heard yesterday, then yes, Bowls can perform at a very high level. We know that. Same goes on for Cello, same goes on for Yell. But it's always the thing of how do you prioritize that? Do you really cater a lot to Bowls and then maybe slag a little bit of the team play? Or do you believe that the team is going to be strong enough in order to win? It's, it's always a, a compromise you have to make. Yeah, I, I think it's also one that's very important to think about. But let's throw our attention back to Yell. Yeah, so this is the head-to-head -head Yell and Snatchy. We've touched on it a little bit, but these are both the snipers for each respective team. Yell, I said it earlier, he's the in-game leader and the sniper for INTZ. Going into that train is going to be instrumental for both of these players to, to provide the opening kills, to provide some space for their teammates, to give them some breathing room on that map of train, because we know it can get pretty dicey at times. Yeah, I, I think it is very important to look at these two players. What do you actually think about this head-to-head? -head? I think it's going to be very interesting. I think. Both of them are aggressive AWP players. The, the big contrast between the two players is obviously that Yell is the in-game leader for INCC. So he has a lot of stuff on his mind while he's playing, where Snatsy is just supposed to run around and, and basically frag out on the server. So I wouldn't necessarily expect Yell to win the head-to-head -head duel in that sense, but if, if Yell can just be somewhat close to Snatsy and also call a great game, then you would argue that he's going to be the more influential player of the two. Well, with that in your minds, let us know in chat right now who you think is going to be able to take this one. Uh, we have already seen this matchup. Could history end up repeating itself? We'll, we'll have to find out. This one, though, is going to be an elimination series. The winning team makes it to that championship bracket. And uh, it looks like these two teams are in somewhat different places. VP may be heating up. That's the real thing that we want to find out here, if that is the case, or if the, the last game was just them playing very well and not something that they can carry moving forward. Definitely so, and I mean, I gotta say, this one is, I'm thinking in my head while we're sitting here, who's gonna win, who am I gonna predict, and I, I gotta say, I'm leaning more towards Virtus Pro because they looked so good to, earlier today. I mentioned how Snacks was giving me flashbacks of his of his greatness uh, back in the day when he was playing in all those majors with, uh, with the original Virtus Pro lineup. I hope that he shows up just like that in the server today, so I'm gonna go with Virtus Pro. Okay, all right. So we are going to have Potter's prediction. Pimp, that means it's time for yours. You want to predict my prediction again, or do you want me to do it? It worked out for you last this time. This is the only time I was right. <laughs> yeah. And technically, you, you kind of right. messed up completely, didn't you? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to let you okay. make your own prediction. I think INCC is, is going to win this one, and I think it's going to be incredibly close. And I definitely buy your argument that Virtus Pro is playing better now, but I think INCC right now. Uh, they just have better players, they have more skill, and they have more to play for in that sense. I think Virtus Pro is the team that we've seen them at, at certain events and we've seen them for a long time online as well. It, it seems like a team that has hit the ceiling. I don't see, you know, mm. I don't see who's gonna step it up the extra notch. I know Mihu is a great player, I know Snatchy can do do well, but when you go up against Cello, when you go up against a player like Bowles as well, with all that experience and with the know-how in, in terms of winning tournaments like these, I think INCC right now is the stronger squad, also considering the veto. I, I'm afraid that if they win train, you're right, it's going to be a blowout on Dust 2, but I hope this is going to be a competitive game. I honestly, you stole the words right out of my yeah. mouth. I was pretty much going to say that verbatim. We are completely <laughs> on the same page. I am going to be making the same prediction. You're joining the winning team now, huh? I, I, I mean, hey, I, it's just you basically said all of the things moving in my head. And uh, it feels really nice to just be the same IQ as somebody uh, on the desk. The exact same IQ, you and I. Yeah, that's great, isn't it? Yeah, it's absolutely fantastic. The only person smarter than us, well, it's Potter and also Twitch chat. VP getting 86% of the vote in Twitch chat. A lot of Polish fans in Twitch chat. A uh, lot of Polish fans. Also, uh, a, a lot of doctors as well. Uh, okay. If you're a doctor, let us know. You, you can use the me smiley face command. Uh, it's usually the most accurate way to let us know what your profession is. And he's pandering again. Again, <laughs> and again, and again, and again. See, when you don't call it out, it's mm. funny. That's like my joke. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 So don't, don't call it out. No, okay. Sorry. Right? Like, like... Aye, aye, aye. Yeah. You want to throw it to the casters now? Or? 
like scared you're gonna ruin my joke. I actually I came prepared. Okay. You're gonna... Oh my! What is this? <laughs> oh God! Right now. Yeah. Well. Uh... I actually think we could hang out on the desk a little bit longer. I'm quite enjoying uh, the desk with our, our new improvement, Potter. How are you feeling about this matchup? I. I... I like it. I think I like uh, I like this table. Oh, the matchup, the the matchup that we're <laughs> yeah, going in the server yeah, yeah, for. Yeah, yeah. I thought you meant this matchup. This, this is honestly the biggest improvement I think we've had on the desk throughout the entirety of the, <laughs> the weekend so far. But we're gonna get ready for this game. We're gonna throw it on over to the casters. I'm really disappointed we don't get to watch him peel that off. Yeah, exactly. That's Especially that's with the, the yeah, that's hurt. gonna hurt like hell. But, uh, you know, maybe we'll get to see it as they walk past. But, yeah, I, I think going into this one, it's going to be another close matchup. I think we've got decent players on either side, but it's who show up. That, that's the problem is who's that's actually going to turn up to the match? Who's going to play well? That's the question. And if Smax does it, if Mihu does it, if VP in general, they, they play up to the level we saw earlier today, I would I would agree and, and jump on Potter's bandwagon. If not, like, then I, I think INC set are the, are the stronger team. But individually, if VP just hit their A game, I think they're going to take it. It all comes down to who has the best day right now. Because yeah, the, this could be a close game. The other thing as well is, like, in terms of the actual map choices, it's like, obviously the first choice coming in from Virtus Pro of Train, it's their most played map is one of their better maps. It's one that you kind of expect when Nuke goes out of the picture. Yeah. For the other side of things, like, let's put it this way. The amount of times that INTZ have played Mirage in the last few months is 19. Yeah. The That's amount of times they played Dust 2 is 4. So it's like, it, it, in a sense, it might be a map that maybe a lot of teams actually veto against them, and that's why we don't see it too often. Like, some of the matchups we've actually had, they, they lost 16-12 to Liquid. Like, that's not too bad a result, because Liquid are a very good team within Dust2. But at the same time, it's not one that they're going to be massively practiced against. It's not one they will have played much European opposition against. So even though it is a map that Virtus Pro have also had a pretty poor record on, you look at the teams that they've lost against Fours, a team that's very like aim heavy that you almost expect to beat most people on that sort of map. You have the likes of FaZe, Heroic, like Avangar in there as well. Like they're all teams that, okay, if you lose you, to them on that map, it's not really that much of a loss. I feel like, okay, they, maybe they could face off against INTZ on that map. Gonna find out, Tom. That, that is true. That, that is the luxury that we have, is that we only have to wait the amount of time it takes us to get into this map. Of course, the first map is going to be Train. As said, it's one of the most played maps for Virtus Pro, but it's also up there for INTZ as well. So although I think VP should be favored going into this map, it's just kind of a coin toss. Yeah, and also, like, I think Train will paint the bet, like, the most accurate picture of the better team strategically because the stool, let's be real, isn't really that strong of a strategical map. So no. I, I feel like this is going to be the true test. Um, and whatever teams win here on train, in my opinion, is probably also going to take it on Dust 2. Okay. So uh, you're predicting a 2 up. I predicted a 2 up. You, you've gone even further than the, the desk did. I'm right? not predicting who's going to win the 2 Oh uh, Yeah, I suppose. So you, I you've kind of just, you've just put a number out there and yeah. just hope it sticks. Exactly. But yeah, I, I definitely think that like if, if we get the likes of Mihu hitting his A game. Exactly. It's interesting that you, you sort of have Snacks coming out and saying that he's the one in game leading, and then you have Mihu literally going through a book of strategies while being sat in the middle. Also, there could be some like translation in, in what you define by in game leading, because in, at least for, for the, the teams that I know, like there's the, the what we call freeze time calling. So basically everything, like deciding the strat, what's the play here, what kind of default are we going to go into, and then there's the mid-round calling. And those two kind of like jobs can be very specific, so maybe Snacks means that he's doing the mid-round calling and, and me who's doing the, the freeze time calling, but like, that's just how he's well, yeah, it. Yeah, potentially. I guess that could be right, because you would not really have a, a strat book for mid-rounds. Yeah, exactly, because <laughs> that, that's, down to, that's down to the player who's alive, but also the player who has most experienced in those kind of rounds, then I would dare say that Snacks has a little bit more than Mihu in those scenarios. So I feel like that would be the best setup, with Mihu calling the freeze time and then Snacks being the the biggest voice on that on that uh, on that mid round call. But now we're gonna jump into train. Enough talk. Now we're gonna see how it plays out on the server. VP versus INTC. INT said whatever way you wanna pronounce it. One team goes home, one team goes to the semifinal. Yeah, matchup that's been well, one that's gone through pretty much counter strike for quite a while now. Brazil facing off against Poland to see who will be making it through to play up against Heroic in the semi-finals. It's going to be a touch, tough matchup, but one of them 
is going to be heading home after this. So one won't have to face off against the Danes. Either way, an early position from the CTs, especially towards that Ivy spot, waiting to see if anybody's going to look to try and wrap around. Yell already finding out a decent amount of okay. information. And while well, opening pick comes in, smoke goes down, and they can switch their gaze onto other portions of the map. Cello on point. Actually, it's going to be false hit the shot. It's almost a perfect pistol round from the CT oh. side. But Miu's just coming in there, saying I'm going to deny it. It's not going to be perfect, at least. But the double peek there should take him out. That's going to be the pistol round for the Brazilian. Yeah, a good start for INTZ, of course, allowing them to now basically get in with what will probably be a couple of SMGs and the rifles. We know that the T's are going to be coming back with a buy in a, a round or two. Yeah. One thing that I also like uh, that has nothing to do with the game itself is the way that especially Yell seems to just find his inner focus just before he goes into a match. Um, not really talked about a lot, but the mental like the mental game that is in Counter-Strike and then the mental focus and stamina you need to have. I, uh, I feel it's nice to see a player who just like finds his own zone and then can like time it with going straight into the game. I feel like that's very important. I'm not sure what he says to himself, if he's just completely silent, maybe has a mantra going on, if he's religious, maybe something there. So I, re I really like the fact that he'll, he'll just take that time just before the game to completely like root himself. Yeah, I think there's a fair few players that do that, yeah. especially within the Brazilian scene. I think Furia do that just before the match begins as well. Exactly. And yeah, just get that sort of zen before they get going. The calm before the storm. But this round, at least, this is a, a farming exercise for INTZ. A chance to make some money, prepare for what will be the buy coming up in the next round. VP, of course, aim of the game, get the bomb down. Get that extra money. It doesn't really matter about the kills, but ultimately they're all going to go the way of the Brazilian side. And they'll be pretty much in a, as good a position as you can get. Yep. going into what will be the third round by. And I think it's just an interesting thing, the whole like mental thing, because it has to come down to what kind of like mental state you want to be in before the game starts. For example, a Brazilian team, you would expect that they are really fired up, constantly hype and all that shit, then maybe you would like kind of take it down a notch, just focus in. For example, Danish team's not known for being extremely hype all the time, so maybe they need to hype it up. Polish teams may be the same. So not as much of just focusing you need to be in a different mental state. It all comes down to who you are and what the team kind of performs. But now we're into the buy round, as you said, Tom. It's going to be a bonus for INTC. Snatchy is taking a little bit of damage, but we are waiting to see that first real duel come out. A big, big, big weapons advantage for the T side. With two creeks. A lot of utility already expended, actually, by the CT side. Smoke dropping on back of six as Snatchy goes down. Olaf, so two players can now push to Ivy. Snatchy can open up towards Olaf. That's a good scenario for VP. They're not going to get the bomb side, but they're going to get a lot of map control on the other way around. And look at that, Veggie just going to take a lot of damage, but still secure the kill. And it's all come down to the stand, and he does get his frag. And importantly, they've done a lot of damage across the board. Three players. Now tag within inches of their life. Bolt's still without the sight as well, and he's already going to pick off one, turn this back into a 3v3, and that was actually the healthy player. Mihu does manage that peak, though. Looks to try and get the bomb down. Veggie waiting for the rotation to come in and leaves it onto Yell. Just a scout in hand, a single shot onto any of these players will net him a frag. In fact, even going to be looking to go with the USP. Weapon is going to be picked up. Mages opt to save it because they yeah. do have like, at least some money, but snacks behind him. We'll close out the round, and now it's going to be interesting to see what actually gets bought up by the CT side going into round number four. INTC, what's the play? Not a lot of money here. Would prefer C sets and Eagles if I was the coach, but they're going to go for the buy. Low utility, even a Famas and a Shiz. Two Famas is actually on Shiz and Yell. Interesting choice going up against so many Creeks and AKs, but let's see, maybe it works out. Maybe they can just hit their shot. It's definitely a possibility with the individual level on these Brazilians. And may have to see a little bit of a aggressive tactic coming out from them, and already the deep smoke thrown into A main, but seems like VP are gonna 
throw heavy presence into Ivy early on in this round, but here is the aggression. Cello spraying all of his bullets, but they will eventually get rid of Mihu. A potential upgrade onto the AK and Snacks. Core out, down to just 31 HP, but now Shears with a lot to do. Don't think he spotted them actually run through the smoke. The peak just off by a second. Yell's gonna hear all the footsteps. He sprays down both. Normally the man with the AWP, but the Famas clearly a close second. As he's gonna net two. Minute left on the clock, but he's found the bomb. And PHR and Snacks, there's a lot left to do in this round. Very tough for them. Bolts will pick up one and now Snacks all alone. I felt like this round um, came down to great aggression from INCC but also a lack of either communication or decision-making from VP. The second that you have a T player who's so like defensive in that team main, he gets pushed by two CTs, you have to either make the decision to push somewhere else or communicate that. So either it wasn't communicated correctly or the decision-making decision -making was too slow because the CTs were just allowed to get that like, <laughs> push in and nothing happened counter-wise for the T side. They did nothing to counter that move. They did nothing to take back map control. They had one player in pop, the rest in Ivy. None of them moved. So definitely some things to work on here for VP. But also, of course, in every single duel we have, the Brazilians were hitting their shots. Yeah, great work from Yell in that round. Three kills for him and Mod. Just look what it's done to the economy of Virtus Pro. Of course, they do still have a little bit of loss bonus going their way, but they are going to be in a situation where they just have to take the hit. Again, we may see an attempt for a bomb plant, a chance to earn a little bit of money and do some damage because CTs haven't had the chance to build up the cash just yet. No AWP in. Oh, here we go. Stacks. Oh, that's so unlucky. The Glock, the pile of trash is he's able to get a headshot and a couple of body shots and still doesn't get the kill. In the meantime, the rest of his team are just trying to double back onto that B side. It's the easier of the two to get the bomb down, but as we know that, so do INTZ, and they've set themselves up accordingly. A couple of players just waiting in fairly aggressive positions to try and stop that bomb from going down. Even just expending the utility they have. Not a bad shot from Veggie, though. That's given them an opportunity to actually get onto the site. I don't want to try and deny the bomb plot, but Mihu's now got a second kill, so the bomb will be able to go down. Unless, of course, that Molotov spreads far enough, which it shouldn't. Now they have a chance to win it, but I would be very surprised. She's already picking up one. Veggie can't connect the shot, but even still, two kills, a bomb plant. Not a bad round for VP. Now we're going to see the buy coming in. The real full buy versus full buy between these two teams. And VP, they, they need to get something going. Of course, they're on the T side, so... Not really favored in this first half, but they need to they need to show something individually from these players. Snatchy needs to get rolling with the AWP. Snacks needs to get rolling as well. These are two of the players that I expect a lot from in this matchup. Odd heavily in the favor of INCC. Aggressive peek out from Shiz. Is he just about gonna survive? Once again, the opening pick is going to go the way of the Brazilian side and close to being taken down, but close doesn't really win you anything. Once again, we're going to see early aggression over onto this B site. But we've been seeing INTZ, the second they find any of these picks, they double up their defense. Yeah. Of course, the more normal strategy is only having one player there. And one, well, I suppose now they do, but the rotation is going to be in fast. However, VP are making their way back. Cello. Here's the first of there at least, but that was just a bait jump from PHR. Nate does a decent chunk of damage. Bomb still on the back of Mihu. Split 2-2 right now, INTZ. Which is the correct way to play it in my opinion. Not a lot of remaining and Cello wants to take a chance. Sees the shadow, Mihu has the advantage. Can't close down the frag. Well, in the end, though. And another one in the sandwich position. It's going to be Yell doubles up, but can't triple it. 2v2. Yeah, it runs out of bullets in the end. Look at the flank coming in from Shiz, though. He might have just timed this perfectly. He's waiting for that peak to come back in and execute Snacks. Now Snatchy just has a decision to make. This is such a risk. He hits the shot, though. Up the ladder he goes. 
His third kill of the round and now looks to run towards that B site. Won't it's be caught be on the plan. cross. And is going to be able to plant the bomb. Bolt just a little bit too late on that rotation. It's turned into the 1v1. It'll take a single shot for Snatchy to get this done. Spots him, but not quite quick enough. Bolt's going to close the round. A nice attempt from Snatchy. That shot up the ladder was ridiculous. But at the same time, it's the Brazilian to get their fifth. And somehow, some way, always Brazilian fans in the venue. Doesn't matter where the event is in the world, you're always going to see that Brazilian flag. It's so nice to see. Shout out to those guys. Now we just need to get a British flag every single Yeah, event. you need to get some good players first, so let's hey. work on that. And there's already a player in the semi-final. That's true. That's one. How many else? And there'll be a Some player yeah. from Britain lifting the trophy as well. It's not like that on my <laughs> Then again, I have five Danish guys who will probably have nah, thoughts with you nah. over that. We'll see. We'll see tomorrow, Tom. I don't know. Cadian's English is so good. I think we can just count him as British at this point. Yeah. No. We, we just absorb other nations, you know? <laughs> I'm not going to comment on that. <laughs> <laughs> Me, who the AK-47. Bit of damage, but nothing too risky just yet. That's the thing, though. They've been winning the rounds, but they've been so ridiculously close. Yep. I was about to say. That That's a single funny. round could turn things back. Quick push in from Virtus Pro through the smoke they go. Great for the flashbangs here. Bolt has a big chance, though. Oh, Bolt's coming in with two. A still possible 3v3 post plant. No utility left for the C side. They only have the weaponry. They have to go for the peaks. Two smokes for the bomb as well for the CTs, that's perfect, but will they be able to push through? And oh dear, PHR just give it away his position and that might be the round in itself. Snacks waiting for a flank that's never going to come, but he is the man you'd want in these sort of scenarios. Trying to fight it back, but Shiz puts him down without a second's notice. Six to one. All right, Tom, we need, we need something from VP now. We need not particularly in this round, maybe in the next full buy, depends on what they do with their money. We need to see something from VP because the execute in general, I feel, was kind of good, like it was okay. The flashbang timings were great. Didn't have a Molotov for the bomb train, but that's also a position that's really hard to Molotov. If you have one pushing upper at the same time, maybe you can kind of shoot that out, but we're gonna have the buy anyway for the T side. This is the full investment. We need to see something from VP now. I know 6-1 is not an uncommon lead for CT on train, but one of the win conditions for VP in this game is that they show their A game. Anything less than that, and this is not going to be a competitive game. Well, at least off the back of the bomb plant. I do have a little bit of extra cash. is looking to get aggressive. He doesn't have any support here. We always speak about the possibility for a trade. There isn't one. He does a lot of damage, but there's Veggie peeking straight out. The tag team of Virtus Pro get that opener once again. Yell now looking to try and take some map control back off of VP, not allowing the Poles to have everything they desire. The bomb's still around this popped up area, and Zan has got aggressive, but he's not going to do much. In fact, not a single point of damage here forcing him back his PHR, and what that means is, even if they were to double back here, they'd still have just kept the player on the other side. Yell once again is going to get a kill, but Snatchy so quick on the trade. Mihu with another, and it's left mainly on to Bolt. Zan so low on HP, I'm not sure how much he can do. Big and the bomb chance. in the meantime has been faked out in the other direction. Big chance for VP. Bolt now in 1v3. Does find the first one, but the two others so far away. With the money right now, I feel like both should actually save this AK, but it's, all, it's also always so hard in a 1v2. Like, you feel like you should go for it every single time, but I think the correct choice here is to save the weapon. And looks like Bolt agrees with me. Well, we'll be a second. We'll find an AWP as well. That's nice. Yeah, the thing is, that it really shows how close these rounds have been, that it's a 6-1 scoreline, four rounds in a row, in fact, for the CT side. Yep. And they still don't really have the finances to actually buy into the next round. Like, you've got the AWP, you'll get a yeah, little bit of extra money onto Bolt. Just can drop, so that's fine. Like, they're going to get a full buy. Terrorists win. 
Oh, actually, Sen is going to have an MP9. Oh, tough times. Bolts and the boys. Need to figure something out. As VP are gearing up. Will be an MP9 for Sand since he prefers to get that utility. Cello sacrificing himself only with the C set 75. A lot of utility though. And that's what I like from, from INTC. Making sure that you always gotta you gotta have those smokes on the CT side of train. That's the the shade advantage for PHR, but doesn't make it into a, a kill. Okay, nice little drop down play, but doesn't really work out. Cello has to give up the position, but he's not dead yet. Risky position from Yal, but no danger in these next 10 seconds. Yeah, good timing on the counter utility. The thing is, though, the CTs don't have anything left, just two flashbangs remaining while the bucket load of utility still sits for the poles. Yeah, and that's one of the things when you don't feel like you have the, the better weaponry, you are a bit quicker to utilize and throw those grenades away. And with 49 seconds to go and no smokes left, it's very hard for the CT side to get an advantage in any of these duels. This might be one of them. Flash goes down towards Ivy. One, two, not three, but very nicely done. Good flash assist from Yell. The problem is the trades have come back in thick and fast. Yell completely caught out in the openings and the last man to the party. Two players with seven HP between them. That gives him a possibility. If he can find Mihu, well, the rest should be easy. But it's that first step in the story that's going to be the top one. And Mihu's not going to give him a second. Already ends the round, gives an extra one over to VP as they get their third on the board. A nice round for Mihu as well. Triple kill for him. Yeah, I think he's, he's top in the server at the moment. With Bolts and Yell not too far behind. And that's the kind of VP like, we need to see in this game if, if we want it to be competitive. And they have been in these, in these last couple of rounds. So, uh, well performing Mihu, Snacks and Snatchy. I know, of course, PHR and Reggie, also good players, but those are not really the ones we expect to have like outstanding performances every single time. The pressure is more on the three players I mentioned before. And the, the problem is, though, it, it's like when it comes to snacks, at least, it, we, we haven't seen it often enough. Like, it, yeah. we saw, like, right. a little bit when they did well at V4. But that, that kind of says testament to what this team needs. They need him to be that sort of third figurehead within this roster. And instead, there's just been Snatchy and Mihu the majority of the time. Again, we're going to get a fast play this time. Not much resistance from INTZ, just a few pistols. They're saving for the next round. Oh, for sure. That it means the VP are gonna get on four rounds on the T side, like, that's fine. In the first 10 rounds, you get four, that's okay. Yeah, no, that really isn't a bad scenario for them whatsoever, and I'm actually interested that they're just gonna be sat back hoping that somebody pushes into this tiny little corner. Of course, for Virtus Pro, this isn't a bad scenario at all. They're not running any SMGs, so what they have to lose is not worth losing. If they can keep everybody alive, it's going to be a big boost to their economy, yeah. especially on the T side as well. And for the CT side, the buy going into the next round is not going to be a particularly good one. It'll be $2,400 added in to their account, and that leaves them, what, just over, like, 44, 4500 Not anything particularly good for a CT buy. You're exactly right. Better at math than I am. Wasn't the toughest equation. No, but I am really bad. <laughs> so we do see, as you see, the buy coming in. Limited utility on some of the players. Yell only with a single smoke. Only one kit on cello. Usually you want to have at least two kits, one for each bomb side. T side, of course, perfect setup. Even the not the op, T side op on snatch it. VP, can they continue this barrage they have been putting in the last couple of rounds? It's going to be Stan. Almost a triple kill. Veggie down to 6 HP. Oh, he does a good job. It's definitely possible to take this B site a lot easier 
than its counterpart on the other side of the map. Doesn't mean that the CTs are going to be able to come in with a man advantage. The problem is they don't have much utility, but they have successfully killed off two players within a matter of seconds. It's left onto Snatch. He does have a Molotov for the bomb. That will at least buy him some time. He doesn't expect the player to be that close. And INTZ get right back onto the ball once the weapons reach their fingertips. The question is, can they retrieve maybe even a double orb setup? They'll retrieve a priest, and that's even better than an orb. I didn't know. We have. Uh, for, the CTs, for the CTs, I would actually say this. Especially if you have one orb already. Give it to Shiz, see what he can do with it. See if he can work any wonders and A capables as well. Buy up, of course, for VP. They have plenty of money to spare and will also have a buy if this goes awry. So let's see what they can do. And you hold the first one. And, um, quite interesting to see what that Molotov Tower stack thing eventually work out to be. On something that uh, I see a lot of players. Already the CT side pretty much out of utility. Yell does have the AWP this time. His teammate taking a lot of damage. Oh, that's unfortunate. And Snatchy's got right above him, but he'll get the free kill anyway. The trade quick from Veggie. Keeps the man advantage going for the Polish side and just continuing this run of terror. The A site offense yeah. has been fairly basic from Virtus Pro. Yeah. Just aggressive plays coming in. Obviously, the standard smoke's going down, but they've been so good at the pick play, especially considering, like, Mihu, I, I think is still... Well, yeah, he's one of the top fraggers within the server. I think he's joint top, and he's been entry fragging as well, so that's always one of the most wonderful things in Counter-Strike. If your entry fragger is playing the best in the server, you win the game. Like, that's pretty much a standard. If you manage to lose that, you're doing something very badly wrong. Like Vitality and Cyborg. <laughs> but yeah, like I have to say also with with the way that the CTs are currently are letting letting VP exploit the Olaf position. Like as far as I could see, they, they weren't really trying to contain or like fight for the Olaf area. And if you know VP and their T side here on train, you'll know that the second that they have the standard smokes down on six and sandwich and they have Olaf control. They're going to be pretty darn good at just winning those duels. They know exactly what they're doing every single time. So you kind of have to fight for Olaf control early on. So you play on the back of six or maybe oh, even Ivy no. up. As we do see some nades land in. They, they have to be proactive. And, and I'm not really seeing that from INTZ so far. Well, yeah, we saw it in the early rounds where when they yeah, lost exactly. the player, they like pot flashed people into A main. They, they were taking challenges around the map. But, but these two, three last buy rounds, we haven't seen yeah, that. No, it, I think some of that comes down to how quick VP have actually been getting the entry. I think me, who's just been taking that space away from them very early on. So and that's where you need to use your Molotovs. Yeah, that's true. Bolts now with uh, the SG. As we do have VP lining up for a B execute. Sand also in the front line. We have Cello to come in from the back. Flashbang timing will be. Imminent, Sand not picking up the first one, and now it's all on Bolt, but he's smoked out. Yeah, as long as they don't do anything overly aggressive here, this shouldn't be much of a problem for Virtus Pro. Me, who's going to be there to try and cut off rotation. Bolt actually managed to get quite far forward, but the peak timing from Veggie, flawless, and leaves just the remaining two players trying to steal a weapon away. What a great comeback, like, in, in these last couple of rounds. INTC were ahead, what, 6 1, 7 1? Yeah, 6 1. And VP have just grinded rounds back. Yeah, they've won five of the last six, including this one. Which on the T side of train is, is easier said than done. Oh, oh, oh okay. <laughs> that's unfortunate. Luckily, there is cover, and Veggie should be able to get that AWP. I think it should be switched towards him. Uh, there we go. Nicely done. Surviving with three players, constantly growing the economy. All right, VP. Show me your moves. Yeah, already, like, if, if, even if this ends 9-6 now, I don't think 
Well, 9-6, I don't think either team would be too unhappy with. If Virtus Pro gets too much more, I think INTZ are going to be in a fair bit of trouble going into that second half. Good start to the round, at least, is PHR this time, looking to try and take the space of Olaf, but he's been shot low. And that's the thing, right? They put the six smoke down. The second that you allow someone into Olaf, he'll have all that area to roam. Luckily for the CT side, Shiz comes in with a huge crack. That's very important. Bolts and Yell trading back and forth. 2v3 now. Shiz on the lane. Looking for the duel, we'll find the bomb. It's left on to Snacks. He's doubled his kills in one round, was sat at just two at the beginning. Can he double it once again? Leave it with a sour taste in the penultimate round in the first half. Long rotation coming in from Zan. It would be surprising if Snacks predicts this, especially considering his current position where the bomb is. And he is starting to check some of these angles. There's one more to go. I'm not sure he's going to do it in time. Zan directly behind him. Also, the cross looking to be held by Yell. The second this bomb goes to be planted, I think that's where he's going to go for the meet. No, okay, he's finding the demise. Actually, right? this plant position is not a bad one. If he can somehow win one of these duels, it's Yell that I think he would need to take down. But he's managed to wrap himself into a position where. Oh, okay, I was going to say he was covered, but then just walked slightly back the other way. Zan from behind will close the round. So, INTZ, they've at least won the half but it could have been a hell of a lot more. And I have once again, so even though he he gets two frags in the round, but isn't really alive for the end, I think Shears is the hero for this round for, for INCC. The way that he, like, he has the timing correct when he pushes the smoke in the hell position, kills the player who's, who has been harassing the Olaf area, constantly just denies that map, like, control that, that VP gets in the early part of the round. Great play from Shears in this round. Very, like, underestimated player, I feel like, in this lineup. Of course, for the final round, both teams will have enough money to buy VP, making a fair amount over the last few. We're going to see the CT side challenge for Pop once again. It's been Cello's domain. And there's a lot of damage onto Snacks. The return is nowhere near as much. Oh, even going to try and throw the name back through the window. Doesn't quite work, but I like the idea. That's a fun idea. Actually, he can get in front of the mouse up here. But he doesn't want to. Now, good completely. timing from Yale. Wrecked that was out important. By the fire, but Yale will get one, as she said, in return. VP, what's the play now? There's been so much utility used just to try and take this pop control. They don't have any Molotovs left. They do have the three smokes available to them. They've thrown another nade down into pop, I believe that was. So, considering how much utility has been used in that direction and how much success they've had with it. It's a bit of a worry for Virtus Pro, and now they're going to fall back into what will be an attempted B side take, I reckon. In the cost benefit analysis, that's not going to be a good one for VP. Top flash down towards lower. Deep smoke as well, but Sand should have the position. He doesn't, though. Shiz close range as well. I think this is a fake, but I feel like the fake at least needs to get a kill or two. Otherwise, it's going to be a tough scenario. Snatchy. Pushing him with the AWP, but Yal hasn't moved. He's still waiting. There's only 15 seconds left. If he can deny the bomb, in fact, Cello's just dropped it. PHR has to run and go and get it, and that's it done. It doesn't matter what happens from here on out. Snatchy does not have time to run back. They needed that fake to be sold a little bit further down the river. And now he's yeah, just going to be jumping and spamming, hoping that there's a miracle shot. Either way, a 9-6 half, fairly standard for Train. And we'll be seeing who can take it in the second half.
a decent comeback from Virtus Pro in the first half after being 6-1 down to finish off with a 9-6 still in the favor of the Brazilians. We now go into our second pistol round to see if it's going to be equalized or if we are going to have a big lead into that T-side for INTZ. Molotov on Yelp. Flashbang thrown away as well. And PHR, oh, okay, okay, just tapping okay. through the smoke, no problem. Snatchy also on the back of one. Me who has a big play here. Two oh. frags from him, goes for the third one towards E-Box, he does get it! Me who, what's this? And it's gonna be Cello hitting the dirt as well. A flawless pistol out from Virtus Pro. Great start into the second half, and I think one that was well needed as well. They did start to rise the occasion a little bit in the last half, but I still think there's more to come from this side. Definitely. More to come from this matchup as well. Full pistols for the T side. P250s and Glocks. Not the best setup, probably just gonna be a, a rush B scenario. Snacks already ready with the Molotov. B explosion imminent. Comes a little bit too early to throw down the Molotov without even being challenged, but probably gonna work out anyways. And now it's just a shooting gallery. Yeah, this is the chance to, to make that extra cash, not wanting to lose a single player, knowing that the buy is coming up into the next round. So similarly to what we saw from INTZ in the previous half, just keeping things clean, setting themselves up nicely to go and what will be the buy round, of course, where they normally do have that disadvantage. Of course, the utilities in their favor, but coming up against the AKs and SGs when you only have such an MP9, you're going to need one of the players at least to step up. Maybe the AUG onto Snatchy will be the one. It's definitely possible. Let's wait and see. As the last commands on the side of INTC are being thrown out. Tactical pause will come in. And uh, directions from the coach will be giving. He has all the strategies written down on the block of paper there. <laughs> block of paper. The, the classic, that, that's normally how I measure my, my paper. Yeah. In blocks. I know. <laughs> <laughs> I just uh, did a bad translation. <laughs> because that's what we would call it in Denmark, but that doesn't make the same sense in English. Languages are hard, Tom, okay? <laughs> well, as someone who speaks a total of one, I would agree with you. That is a lot of damage off the back of those nades. As I said, that's the real advantage that Virtus Pro have, but Veggie still going to be going strong with the trusty Thamas. But you know what, Tom? You do that one language very well. Occasionally. <laughs> Just as VP are doing very well in this one here, despite them being at a disadvantage weapons-wise. Already eliminated bolts and yell down to 15 HP. PHR with a good chance here of just holding this area. MP9 not bad for this kind of situation. It's up to INTC to kind of like find a way in towards the bomb site. We could see them attempting the the backline push out through Ivy. And you see, of course, Miho here. He's he's expecting something of that style to come in. Spending his utility, forcing the T-side to wait so long. But this is actually the opposite play. This is the, the smoke to kind of take off the back line, but it's actually missed. And there's a gap and it. it's not really going to make a lot of sense because there are no CTs back, back line. That's so easily spotable. Uh, with the execution, sprays down to a third as well. Leaves just shears remaining 15 seconds to try and make a play. And it's going to be me who once again who rules in the server. 19 kills now to his name. He's the man that we've sort of spoken about when it comes to Virtus Pro. The one player who has sort of almost lived up to the expectations yeah. when going into this roster. Snatchy, we still feel like there's more to come. Snacks, well, there's more been and done. And the other two players within the team is kind of hard to say at this point. Yeah, it's going gonna, it's gonna to be up to this tournament for them, I feel like, to show that, that they have a couple of maps where they'll burn through as well and, and make their mark. And to see early on, like, the score is 9-9 nine, nine, and they have one tactical pause remaining. I'm a big fan of, of using all tactical pauses in the game, but this is 
this is early, so maybe the coach had a lot of different things he wanted to touch up on. Even though we're only 20 rounds in, and we're probably going to see maybe all 30. Well, it's especially interesting when they're allowed to talk within the freeze time. Yeah. But I guess in the early start of the half of the T side is actually the most important. Because if you can break the economy of the CT side, things become a lot easier. You can find things that work, you can find weaknesses with the defense, but at the beginning, you're sort of in that learning phase. So maybe there's things that he spotted out, information that he wants to transfer over to the team, or maybe just that they need some time after these early portions to go, okay, we need to talk about this, we need to fix this, which I think is something that if you're still oh. trying to fix things in round like 25, then it's probably just going to be a pause to almost calm down. Yeah. Let's hope they can use it in that regard. So we can get a close match between these two. Of course, Kuban on the on the other side, coach from VP, has been with the Orc for a long time. Well, he is the longest standing member, right? Yep. Also, and uh, a big figurehead in the 1.6 scene as well. Not really one of the flashiest players back when he was playing, but a very, very intelligent player. Well, I suppose that's what you want as a coach. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Guys, good. guys, what I would do, just do a sick orb flick. Like, you know, it's like, well, it's not really very helpful. It's like, do it. Just I do could it. do it. You should do it. <laughs> yeah. For, uh, for SG, SGs and uh, one up on the T side. Best setup that they could hope for. While the CT side, they still have one MP9 on PHR, but it's definitely the bonus. They have lots of money. They could have just dropped him in a real weapon, but they're running with the MP9, and I respect that just to farm up even more money, just to secure that even if they lose a round at some point, they have plenty of cash in the bank. Well, especially when you consider his position, it really isn't that yeah. bad of a gun to have. Like It's viable at minimum. We've seen a huge amount of success with it. Oh, it's definitely not, like, bad. Just look at the time risk. 35 seconds left. Not a lot of utility for the CT side, but they burnt this clock so low, and the Ts really haven't gained any ground. Finally, they'll be able to find a pick, and onto Mihu as well. Not a bad man to take down. Veggie will fall in turn. The defense whittled away. It's only really snatchy, oh, okay. and he gets removed as well. PHR, the last man, and he's going to get executed as he tries to fly up the ladder and snacks while... Unless they forget to plant the bomb, I don't think he's winning this round. Kind of curious to how that all happened because INCZ just got like 1v1 duel after each other. There was no refract potential for any of the VP players. I think Mihu might have even gotten killed through a smoke. So it's a, it's a tough scenario, but they had, they had all the knowledge in the world. VP knew exactly what was going on. You can see several players, Mihu behind the smoke on, on Ivy towards backline. The player on, on the bomb side was also like zoomed in towards that Ivy position. So they knew exactly where, where the terrorists where the terrorists were going. So it was it was all down to VP not hitting their shots in these duels. Well, Snacks fighting to hold on to his gun. Maybe fighting to hold on to his opponent's gun. He'll take that SG and bring it into the next round. We've seen Snatchy use it at times, but I imagine he's gonna be getting onto that AWP, which is yet to really be seen thus far. They haven't had to like upgrade into it, so they've just been sticking with the rifles, but now that things have gone wrong for their CT side, I imagine we'll get the big green. Yeah, surely we'll get a pass as well for VP just to talk things through, make sure that everything is in line for this buy that's coming up. I do feel like we have like two almost polar opposite coaches though. Like yep. you, you talk about Cuban, I would say he's like the calm within Virtus Pro. Like you see his sort of style of coaching, very relaxed, like not necessarily getting up and rowdy. Whereas you talk about a poker and I'm pretty sure that he could blow up my eardrums with oh, how loud yeah. he screams. Either way, fast play into the site, a change of pace for INTZ, PHR. He's gonna be able to get one but two in return from Shears, a nice shot from Mihu, but it won't change the round. The flash assist in this round has been phenomenal. It's on to Snacks. He's not going to connect his shot. Snatchy probably just going to have to fall back and save the rest of the team with a little bit of extra money at least that might be able to buy around this AWP. But that almost seems like a direct counter. Yeah, like exactly. your, your opponent's taking a pause. Play. 
you just run into the site, blast your way through, and remove any ideas it's from the their perfect mind. play. And also with the fact that they got, they had two perfect flashbangs. That's that's what you want really. You want the the, the standard smoke set up, quick pushing from two guys, and then two flashbangs coming in with the assist. And the Brazilians just <laughs> always they're they're always always ready for some Counter Strike. It's lovely to see. Cello with the assist, Sand with the double flash assist. INTC now 11 to 10. Still a buy from BP, as you said. But Mihu missing a weapon, only a Desert Eagle. Well, that's actually why I'm quite surprised that Snatchy like, went peeking yeah. back in. Yep. I guess it was for damage, but if he keeps a rifle there, Mihu has a gun. And considering he's been the best player in the server for your team so far, the fact that he's with a Deeg, okay, there's the argument that, okay, he's your best player, he can use the Deeg, <laughs> but... On the other side of things, I'd still much rather have him with a gun in hand. Snatchy, though, is going to be able to get the opener this time. The individual peek from Bolts is going to be met with an orb shot to the chest. Still, only Snacks actually remaining on the B side, considering his performance not only today, but throughout the tournament, other than, like, I think it was one map where he would play very well. I would be wanting to put more pressure on him, like, see how he's actually going to perform, see if you can take away the B site, which INTZ really haven't done so far. It's mainly been A site pushes that have been to the detriment of Thirdus Pro. But once again, look at the rotation. Look at VP just stacking up on that B site. I guess because it has been so many A plays, they're expecting yeah. it to be in this direction. They have sent nigh on everyone to try and defend here. And even PHR, who's together with the Veggie, these two players, towards A, they can easily rotate into B as well. And now the bait is coming out onto lower. That was, that, was, that was not very good. Well, no, actually, the second he died, Veggie actually goes right back over to the other side of the map. He's not going to be able to get the... Look how far back the bomb is. There's only 12 seconds left for it to actually get onto the site. PHR, still from above, is going to be able to do quite a lot of damage. One kill at least goes his way. The denial won't be there from Snatchy. But he's very close by. Yell, it looks like he just flew through the air to find that kill, but, well, he'll fly to his death instead. And that will be another round on the board for Virtus Pro. Bomb plant will, well, more than secure a buy coming in for the Brazilians. They've got plenty of cash to play with. And for the CT side, at least they have a couple of players surviving, but even still, it's not going to be the best of buys going forward. And at that point, like, if, if that's the fake they did down lower, if that's your fake towards B, then just don't do the fake and have one more player towards A, because that did nothing. I honestly think that it would have been more of a fake if there was no one there, because they would already yeah. rotate Veggie away. The second they see that, they're like, oh, that's the fake. Okay, they're going. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Another round coming in, 11 to 11. Very tight as we expected between these two teams. CT side have grabbed themselves one SG. Two T players towards that Ivy. Mihu close range, Snatchy long range. Early flashbang, but Mihu still gets it. And Snatchy gets the shot with the AWP, so Bolts is removed. Nice little tag team setup. And Snacks, of course, for the CT SG will Grab the first frag, eventually fragged out by Yell. Bomb will go down though. Shiz and Yell, 2v4. Snatchy behind them. And he's yeah. not gonna miss those. They planted for an aggressive position, maybe expecting the flank to be coming round in from behind. Instead, Yell now needs to get in the faces of these CT players. Manages to get the opening pick. He needs an ace to win this round and they know exactly where he is. Doesn't quite connect. Misses both shots, in fact. And I think he knew that that was an opportunity to steal that round away. Instead, Snatchy puts him down, gets their 12th. And again, the bomb plant gonna help out the T's to secure a better buy. All right, INTC, you need to get something on the board now. And they do have the buy coming in. They have enough money to get everyone on decent weaponry. Well, the surprising thing as well is I, Cello's someone who, at least in the past, we've seen a lot of prospects for currently Bottom in the server. Yeah. Someone that needs to be step up is Yell leading by example. Oh, Snatchy want to go for the aggressive inside peak. Actually goes for the second shot as well and will land it. That's just perfect. That's exactly what you need in such a, an important round, such a close round economy-wise. Will he get the third one as well? Sees the head. Snatchy triples up. 
And he explodes into the server. That's exactly what you want from your AWPA. We've seen those moments from Yell, but... What do they even do at this point? They're gonna try and... I like this. That's not a bad angle. No, very close to actually getting a shot. He hits the shot, but unfortunately, I think it was through a large amount of floor. Hmm. It was unfortunate. PHR puts another one to the deck. It's going to be an even more difficult scenario this time for Yelp. One versus five, 40 seconds left. It, it sounds silly, but he may even want to just consider trying to hold on to this AWP. Yeah, but you can see he was already reading that and saying, okay, where do we want to save? You probably want to save T-Spawn. Or at least around that area. Veggie's coming into A main. Mew coming in from behind. They're gonna they're gonna catch up. Yeah, 13 to 11, Tom. 13 to 11 now. Yeah, I think this is the moment where things start to slip away from INTZ. They managed a couple of rounds onto the board, but with VP now building back up the cash, Snatchy gaining in confidence as well, which now sticks him right at the top of the board alongside me, who Yell being the only player really stepping up. It's a surprise to see Cello and Bolt, the two bottom fraggers at the moment for the team. And while Snatchy's going to be given another opportunity, this time, oh, just off to full back, actually goes for a cheeky little repick. Anything more? No, Snacks is going to be there instead to clean things up. An AWP has been retrieved at least. It gives Sand an opportunity, but in reality already two men down. Yeah, and so much utility still left on the CT side compared to nothing on the T, on the T side. Still two smokes. Shouldn't use the smokes before they see any movement from the T side. And who's once again Pushed all the way into T-spawn. Sand seems like he's kind of like aware that it could happen, but it's it's hard. It's a rough time. And VP, they have stepped up the game. We have to say it. Snatchy's been playing well. Me, who has been playing well. Snatch has been okay. Not not too good. Not too bad. But the two players that we like put our faith in for VP, they've they've done very well. Yeah, and I, I think alongside them, like, a few players have stepped up here and there over the last few rounds especially to give them a much better chance of closing this out. Of course, we go into Dust 2 next where we don't really see too much from either of these teams on that map. Last pass for INTC, last chance for Poker to at least decide when he wants to give words to the players. A little motivational speech there. Coming out from him. Yeah, without a bomb plant especially, this could be one of the last ditch efforts for the side. Like, of course, you'll go for a buy at 15. Yeah, yeah, sure. But it's one of those where, okay, maybe you don't have the AWP, or maybe you have some yeah, utility missing there. or something. Yeah. yeah. Once again, though, it's looking like... If we play outside. Oh, they're going to attempt to blast into this one, throwing a few extra grenades before they do. CT side countering in return. Actually, it's going to be Veggie spray through the smoke to open things up. Cello goes down once again. 8 and 20 at the moment. Zan hoping to trade this back, but they're being picked apart. Veggie with an impactful triple and leaves Shiz alone. He's been one of the better players for INTZ in this map, but again, it's a big ask. And this is a couple of times now we've seen what? Yell having to attempt a 1v3, then having to attempt a 1v5, now a 1v4. Like, yeah. these early round scenarios have been utterly dominant for Virtus Pro, and I hate to say it, but it seems like INTZ have completely run out of ideas. Like, if, if you pause in your next strategy is let's just try and run into the A site, I feel like that's, that's where the strat book is pretty empty. Well, they had some elements other than just running in, but I have to agree with you also because VP read that like a mile away. They put down the all of Molotov. They had a player e-box. They were completely ready for whatever the T-Sat had to throw at them, even with the smokes and the Molotov that INTC threw out. So very easy to read, and VP does that. Last chance effort for the Brazilians here on train, which is, of course, the, the map choice of VP, but then again, I feel like both of these maps, like 
DP have lost a lot on those two, but then again, INCC only have a 25% win rate on them. Yeah, and I've only played it four times over the last few exactly. months. It's, it's a questionable map for either side. It seems like an attempted counter pick, and we'll see if that one works. A quick trade early on. As mentioned, it's a bit of a weaker buy. They have to just try and brute force this. They don't have the utility to try anything else. Snap. No one checks CT stairs. Well placed to at least give them the man advantage back. They're still going to be pushing in this direction. Veggie just waiting in the corner. PHR doubles things up. And well, he, Veggie's not even needed. He can just chill in the corner. Bolts will have absolutely no idea that he's still here. Like that, that's the smart thing about that play. Like he could have easily helped out his teammate. Instead, he gets this aggressive peek. And VP with a big streak of rounds. Only two lost on their CT side. They have closed out their map choice. They have got themselves that early victory. And now they're going to a map which is a relative unknown. Like sure, this is a map that has been picked by NTZ. I guess that puts something behind it. Yeah. But at the same time, with not many maps on record and not many victories, this is not one where you go forward and you go, okay, this should be an easy win. That was the next level fist bump. That was the best fist bump I've ever seen. Did you I, see I it? missed it, no. Okay, yeah. It's probably not good to show on TV anyways, but I like it. <laughs> you can Check show that me replay out. You can show me out. Yeah. But yeah, no, again, it was like a, a decent CT side from VP. They did enough on the T side as well towards the end of the half. And I don't think we really saw enough from INTZ when it came to that T side. Def definitely not. We, hopefully we can see more of them on both T and CT side when we go on to the next yeah. map, which is just two. For now, we're going to go to a break. We'll see you then.